I used to have a lot of trust in many Instagram influencers. And I honestly believed that all these stays in Dubai were innocent business trips. Until I heard about the Dubai Porter Party. There is a much darker side to Dubai. Not everything we believe about some influences is the whole truth. When I pull back the curtain, it led me into a rabbit hole. Parents need to know a generation of young aspiring influencers is being lured in by quick money and something needs to be done about this or else. My favorite eyeshadow from the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. I love eyeshadow palettes. I highly recommend this palette. There are so many, especially young women, trying to be influencers. There's also a dark side of online influencing. I don't want to go into details about that because it, it freaks me out. I don't want to scare people. I said, how do you make money? I've never understood it. He was like, you know how there's like Beyonce and Jay-Z, famous people for music? He's like, well, we're famous for social media. I'm like, so people follow y'all just to watch your life? And then he was like, yeah. I was like, okay, sign me up. On the surface, becoming an Instagram influencer appears to be the new gold rush. Multiple studies have shown that more and more teenage girls would rather become a social media influencer compared to any other profession. So imagine, you're an Instagram influencer. Every day you get emails from brands offering you free products and thousands of dollars. There's this appeal with influencers like the most popular kid in class. And if you happen to be five years old, your very opportunistic parents also want in on the action and are positioning you from a very young age for a piece of the influencer pie. What you're about to see is the darker side to Instagram influencing. The temptation to portray a lavish lifestyle for validation and the quest for materialistic gain is driving many influencers to take questionable shortcuts in order to achieve success. April 2022, videos emerged on TikTok. TikTok about a concept written off and dismissed as a mere conspiracy theory. Dubai Porta Potty, a pretty trending topic across social media platforms. That is that some influencers were being flown out to Dubai in order to be defecated on or in. And in exchange, they received money, expensive gifts, extravagant, luxurious experiences. One of the first people to make the story go viral was a TikTok user by the name of Jennifer. It's called Portable Potty, like a human potty, a human toilet. Most of the TikToks that followed were reactions and summaries from non-participants. A prince wanted to party with me on a yacht in Dubai oh, for like for no. like 20k. 20k is not Which is enough. Crazy. I think even if you offered me like 5 million, I would not do it. Anyways, well, I got scouted apparently. One particular video shows a 26 year old Instagram influencer reading out their contract. And I'm um, 20 years old, 26 years old. I'm willing to come to Dubai to Sultan Ali. In Dubai, I will have an STD check and Mr. Ali too. After that, we are having unprotected. Which is all fair and fine. What happens between two consenting adults is their own business. But the woman also says she'll be participating in an encounter with the client's underage brother. I will also, um, uh, his virgin brother, who is 13 years old. For some wealthy men, the line between regular Instagram influencers and sex workers is becoming very, very blurry. Even though sex work is illegal across all states in the United Arab Emirates, it still doesn't stop many from procuring many desperate young women. It's one thing for those Instagram influencers who knowingly seek out opportunities to participate in these encounters for quick money. But what happens when girls who've barely finished school are being persuaded to engage in these encounters in exchange for life-changing amounts of money? A TikTok user by the name of St. Mullen shared a video that has been viewed more than 2 million times. Hello guys, I'm exposing how they first approach you for the Dubai Porta Potty. 
I always knew that it was something that was real because I heard rumours about it but I never thought that it would happen to me, literally. Um, I got this DM from some weird person messaging me about a party that's happening in Dubai. When she started asking more questions about this trip, what she would discover was very, very shocking. And then they start talking about fetishes and I was thinking, yeah, this is definitely one of them scam things because I ain't trying to fulfill nobody's fetishes, I don't care. In the clip she shares screenshots of where they specify how much they're willing to pay and what exactly she was expected to do. The content creator told the Mirror newspaper she had no intentions of flying out to Dubai. I mean, I, I wanted to play along and see what, where this was going because I was thinking there's no way you are paying me to come to you. The prince, who was reportedly worth $374 million, was allegedly ready to pay the content creator $18,000 to join him and his friend. Now it's obvious that this girl's invitation to be flown out to Dubai was very clear on what she was expected to do in exchange for the money. But there are other times when girls are deceived into coming to Dubai and not given any details of what they are really expected to do. Rada Sterling, who's a human rights activist in the UAE claimed, we've received a number of complaints from influencers and artists who have been invited to Dubai for performances and events to then be lured into parties where they've been expected to participate in sexual activities. It's a very dark and dangerous thing when you're dealing with certain men who've got governments and entire police forces in their pocket. But then this poses an interesting question. Who exactly do these billionaires target? Based on multiple anonymous confessions, there are three groups of females that are targeted to engage in these encounters with these men. The first group is A-list celebrities like actresses, singers, famous runway and pageant models. This tier commands the most amount of money anywhere from 500,000 to 10 million dollars. There have been rumors of some billionaires spending that much money for a one night stand for females that fall into this category. For tier 1 females, it normally doesn't involve degrading fetishes like the porter party because the people in tier 1 will have a lot more bargaining power on the encounters they have with these ultra rich billionaires because they have their own money as well. But some are willing to participate only because the money being offered is too much to turn down. The second group comprises of Instagram macro influencers. So these are females with a million plus followers and a degree of fame. It also includes celebrities who are not as relevant as they once were. This tier commands approximately $100,000 to $500,000 for encounters. Unlike females in tier 1, they don't have as much bargaining power so they sometimes engage in mild fetishes because the money being offered is tempting and they wouldn't be able to make that kind of money as easily or as quickly by themselves. And the last group comprises of Instagram micro and nano influencers. It also includes regular females like flight attendants, waitresses, hotel receptionists, and sadly, some Instagram models from poorer African countries. This tier commands anywhere from zero to $50,000. Afternoon, I am sending you this video to let you know that I am happy with the um, terms and conditions that you have sent to us. Um, I'm happy with the allowance of £3,000 per day um, for the normal sex um, and I'm happy with the extra money for all the fetish things that you would like. Sometimes they have encounters with these rich men for no money because in exchange they'll get flights to Dubai, stays in luxury hotels and eat in 5 star restaurants and receive gifts in exchange. Unlike tier 1 and tier 2, this group has no bargaining power at all. It is literally a deal or no deal. I've never made large amounts of money that fast or in such a short time. And yes, I hated men abusing me. But the more money I made, the more I could justify why I was doing this. But then you soon have realization. They only pick you because you're fresh meat and they want to see how much they can get away with. I soon realized it wasn't that I was more beautiful. I was just a hole for them to use. In time, I felt dirty and my mind started to change. I no longer trusted any men because more than half are married and I really believed all men were pigs and abusive. 
I started to hate myself, but I loved and needed the money, and I felt I needed to keep doing this. This group also has the highest number of people who suffer from depression and PTSD. And as we're about to find out later in the video, taking their own lives, allegedly, as a result of these dangerous and degrading sexual encounters. Now a TikTok user and former flight attendant has weighed in on rumors of the Dubai Porter Party. So I'm doing a flight and a friend says to me that on her previous flight, she was flying with this girl in um, first class. And so they're, they're sitting in the galley chatting as we do, you know, galley chat, whatever. And the girl's like, yeah, babe, she's like, I'm just trying to get my fiber in. And she's like eating all this shit that she's eating her oatmeal. She's eating Greek yogurt. She's like, and the girl's like, okay, cool. She's like, I, I didn't ask her nothing. Like, but she kept telling me like, oh yeah, I've got to get my fiber in. I've got to get my fiber in. Like she really, really wanted to tell her little secret, right? So the girl finally is like, okay. So I was like, okay, like, why are you, like, why are you, why do you need so much fiber? You know, like I took the bait, like, oh, why do you need all this fiber? And the girl was like, Honestly, babes, like, I get paid to sh on Emirati men <laughs> and I've got to eat all my fiber because I'm going on a boat tonight. <laughs> so literally, this girl was like in the galley eating like all of this fiber because after the flight, she was going on a boat on some Emirati dude, right? And so, <laughs> so some of the questions that I've gotten are like, oh, like, do flight attendants do it? Like, yes, yes, flight attendants do it. Um where does it land the chest and the mouth honestly if i had no morals and values like i would do it too i um when i went i didn't get paid for nothing because i didn't i didn't do nothing i just had a good time i was just a good time girl <laughs> i got a little bit of money <laughs> it's not a scandal to any of us like everybody knows about it so for me it's just weird that everybody's like oh my god there's this Scandal and like everybody's like, oh my god, I thought this was only in the UK. Now, to be fair, you do have to understand that UK babes have a bit of like, UK babes. I'm so sorry to say, I have a bit of like a reputation in Dubai, and like they they will do anything for you know a little dollar or whatever. Um, so I I wouldn't be surprised if if yes, some girls were getting on. It's one thing to engage in the Dubai Porter Party as a young girl from London because you want to flex and want to quench your materialistic desires. But what happens if you grew up in one of the poorest parts of the world and you're being offered life-changing amounts of money in exchange for engaging in the filthiest fetishes imaginable? Bridget Aching grew up in Nairobi, Kenya, in a neighborhood called Kibera, which is one of the largest slums in Africa. With a population around 300,000, the majority of people live in makeshift shacks, housing up to eight people with some sleeping on the floor. Success in this part of the world means having something to eat, being disease-free, and living past 30 years old, as this is the average life expectancy of these people. This was the environment that Bridget Aching grew up in. These inhumane slum conditions was her reality for most of her life. She always had dreams to escape the slums and become rich and famous. Initially, she tried to do this by working as a housemaid. This is where I used to stay when I was a house girl. This is where I used to live and go to work and get that 1200 and get comfortable with it. I am from humble beginnings. You see these are the jewelries I used to make. But there was a big problem. This was only enough money to get by and certainly was not enough to be able to afford the luxurious lifestyle she'd always dreamed of. And this was when she had the life-changing realization. She could flaunt her curvy body on Instagram and get the attention of rich sugar daddies in exchange of money and gifts. To her, this seemed like a much more realistic and faster way to accomplish her dreams than selling cheap jewelry to other poor Africans. Other socialites around Africa had already proven that by advertising your body in seductive ways, and if you were curvy or whatever body shape was in demand at the time, this would guarantee the attention of rich businessmen and politicians. And as her following was growing every day, she got the opportunity to feature in a reality TV show called Nairobi Diaries, where she did whatever she could in order to get attention and to be as memorable as possible on camera by becoming an exaggerated version of herself. I don't struggle to fit in. God has already blessed me. I work so hard. 
So why not get myself a car? And just like she planned, it worked. And in a matter of a few months, her financial status was about to change. She became more famous in Kenya and started getting more international attention from rich men residing in Dubai. And uh, you are getting a guy who wants to give you like $10,000 just to go visit him wherever in Dubai or wherever and he's willing to dash you ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars some people have never seen ten thousand dollars in their life man you just need to look pretty and get ten thousand dollars and be on that uh, flight and go and do what you have to do I always feel like it has to be something that is unique because it's crazy things you're asked to do we told to suck tools to do what like it's crazy you can start like I don't want to go deep I don't want to go into details about that because it's, it's, it freaks me out. I don't want to scare people. And just like she'd always dreamed of as a poor Kenyan girl. This was like $3,000. I want this for my birthday. This one is Charles and Keith. This one is a Christian Dior. And to many teenage girls on Instagram who saw the lifestyle she was living, it appeared like she was living the dream and was worlds apart from the environment that she grew up in. However, there was a trade-off. Bridget quickly realized that there was a cost to these sexual encounters. There is nothing for nothing. You want $5,000, you're gonna do something that is worth $5,000. The more dangerous, immoral, outrageous, and disgusting, the more money you'd be able to take back with you to Africa. But what you're about to realize is that there is more, and things are about to get a lot worse than this. Monique Karungi, also known online as Mona Kiz, was a 24-year-old Ugandan Instagram model. She was a very bubbly person who constantly wanted to make others smile. She always wanted to participate in daring things. And according to family and friends, many times she preferred to live life on the edge. Despite the source of her wealth never being known, she developed a reputation for living a lavish lifestyle while staying in Dubai. On Sunday the 1st of May 2022, Monique took her own life by jumping from the Al Fahid Hotel in Dubai from the 9th floor of the building. As their death was trending online, social media was a wildfire of misinformation and conspiracy theories. Some people believed it was a homicide because she threatened to expose some really powerful men in Dubai. Some people also believed the girl shown in the viral video was not even her. Others believed it was severe depression that led her to take those actions. And the most common one, a video of her was allegedly leaked in which she was participating in the Dubai Porter Party, which caused her to take her own life because of the shame and humiliation. The most reliable source was a spokesperson from the Ugandan government who confirmed the person in the video that went viral was indeed Monique and she added, the authorities are still investigating the circumstances surrounding her death and only then would the repatriation of her body back to Uganda be done so that her loved ones can have a funeral for her. The most likely reason given to the Ugandan government was that she had been earning a significant amount of money from sexual encounters with rich men in Dubai and sending the money back to her boyfriend in Uganda. But here's where the story gets twisted. The boyfriend was allegedly spending all her money and decided to get into another relationship with someone else. And some people are even speculating that the boyfriend disappeared with all her money and got married to his new girlfriend and started a new life. This was all whilst Monique was in Dubai, earning thousands of dollars from engaging in what many believe was the Dubai Porta Party. This is a plausible theory to the reason why she lost the will to live and decided to take her own life because it's one thing to engage in the most vile sexual encounters for money. But if the reason you were doing those things was to have a comfortable life with your boyfriend who ends up taking all your money and marrying someone else, this would drive a lot of people insane. Rest in peace to her and may God be with Monique's family in this difficult time in Uganda. I want to make it very clear, I'm not trying to paint every single Instagram influencer with the same brush. Many influencers are actually improving the lives of many people, are very hardworking and deserve all their success. And obviously there'll be people who'll be jealous of that. But there's a growing number that are using the accounts for what has become the darker side of Instagram that many people don't talk about or would rather just ignore. And I'm not even trying to put every single rich man in Dubai in the same box because that's just ridiculous. 
But we can't ignore the growing number of impressionable young females who are being lured into these encounters and might not realize the consequences of their actions until it's too late.